As I was resting one evening by the side of the road, I saw an old farmer in a field that he had just hoed. And his face was all brown and wrinkled by the sun and the wind. And he was talking to the Lord, just like you'd be talking to a friend. Well, he said with his voice all calm and quiet, them corn tassels need shocking, but I've got no string to tie it. It hadn't rained in so long, Lord, that the field is mighty dusty. And it's been so unbearable hot that the kids is even getting fussy. Now that grass down in the pasture, Lord, it ought to be knee high. You know, if we could just have a little rain, Lord, it might keep the old cow from going dry. Oh, but listen to me talking. You'd think I wasn't grateful. If you didn't know me better, Lord, you'd, you'd think I was downright hateful. You'd think I forgot about that new calf that you sent and the money in the mail that took care of the rent. Mama's cough's better, and Johnny's home from the Navy. And all that good Sunday dinner with chicken and dumplings and gravy. And that new preacher that you sent us, Lord, he's a fine young man. Why, he's just converting them sinners to beat the band. Well, I guess I'll mosey on home now, Lord, and won't take up no more of your time. I guess there's plenty of folks here, Pops, that's waiting to ring your line. Evening to you, Lord, and watch over us tonight. But don't worry about us, Lord, because everything's going to be all right. As the old farmer left, I thought about what had been. Here was a man talking to God just like talking to a friend. And I wondered, would God really listen to me? And there on the road, I fell down to my knee and asked forgiveness for the way I had been and sought the Lord as my Savior and friend. My life changed that day and a new life began all because of that farmer and Jesus, his friend. Are you lost and alone? Is your life filled with discord? Well, just follow this simple lesson of the farmer and the Lord. Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. Yes, tonight, folks, I, I want to do something that's a little different. If I had to entitle this sermon, it would be called, Give Me That Old Time Religion. You know, we hear it everywhere we go. Things just aren't the way they used to be. They're so much worse. We look back at years gone by and we long for the way things used to be. But times change. Things change. Society changes. And it's not all bad. You know, there's been some good changes. If we'll admit it, we all make more money than we ever thought possible. And air conditioning here in our churches along with these padded pews. Medicine certainly has come a long way. You know, things people used to die of are now cured quite easily. You know, there was a time they called appendicitis cramp colic and people died of it. Today, everyone's got a cell phone. You young people don't remember having to walk around with a bunch of dimes in your pocket and look for a pay phone. We've got computers and information at our fingertips. 
Yes, some things have improved, but overall, our society has gotten worse. Sin is more open today than ever before. People today openly defy God. How did we get to this point? How did we get to where we are? We got here by turning away from God's word. Yes, things change, but let me tell you, God never changes. And God's word never changes. And that brings us to today's sermon. We need some of that old time religion. Turn with me to Proverbs 22. Very short verse that everyone should have underlined in their Bibles. Proverbs 22, and look at verse 28. Solomon said, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Now most young people today don't know about landmarks. Young people today think everything stops or starts at the corner. <laughs> or maybe the fence around their home. Of course, a landmark is a survey point. It's where you start measuring for land acreage. It's a boundary. Did you realize that there's landmarks in the Bible? And this is what Solomon was talking about. There are boundaries. And if we are to stay in the will of God, we have to stay within those boundaries in our lives and in our teaching and in our preaching. You go to many churches today and the preaching that you're going to hear is nothing, nothing like you heard several years ago because they've changed the landmarks. <laughs> oh, to be able to go back and hear one of those old preachers preach. Now, I'm talking about that sweat-slinging, spit-wiping sermon. Sermons of days gone by, hell, fire, and brimstone. Back when preachers were afraid to call sin a sin. And that the wages of sin is death. And death without Jesus Christ means you are bound for hell. Now, we all talk about the good old days. And we, we remember them in different ways. I'd kind of like to play a little game with you tonight. Let's take just a, a minute and take this remember when test. I want you to just say amen if you can remember when you hung a rug on a clothesline and beat it with a broom to clean it. Say amen if you remember the time where you could call the grocery store and tell them what you wanted and they'd deliver it. Amen. Do you remember when movies were cheaper on Saturday and you didn't have to worry about the content? Say amen if you can remember when you got your news from the radio. Say amen if you can remember when the doors of your home were never locked. Amen. Do you remember when hobos used to stop by your home and work for food? Amen. Say amen if you can remember when your mother canned vegetables for the coming winter. Or when doctors made house calls and they carried everything they needed in a little black bag. Amen. Say amen if you remember when the word gay meant happy. Amen. Amen. How about when a mouse was a rodent that you trapped, it wasn't something that was on your desk. Amen. And downloading, that's how you got the hay out of the wagon into the barn. And a website, <laughs> that's where spiders live. And when mama said time out, <laughs> it meant you was headed to the woodshed. 
Say amen. If you remember when you hoped it wasn't raining if you had to go to the bathroom. When preachers preached against sin and they weren't afraid to tell you that you were going to hell if you didn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Our society has come a long way. And we've got a lot to be thankful for. But dear friends, we've also lost a lot. Or we've left a lot that we need to regain. That's why God has told us not to remove the ancient landmarks. Society changes, but God doesn't change. God's word doesn't change. Because what was sin thousands of years ago... It's still sin today. I want you to look at Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 and part of verse 9. Hebrews 13, 8 and 9, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. You know, we've become so afraid that we're going to offend somebody, we won't call sin a sin. And let me tell you this, dear people, just changing the name of something doesn't change what it really is. Abortion. It was and it still is murder. Murder. It's not a choice. Homosexuality is an abomination. It's not a lifestyle. Adultery. It's not an affair. It's a sin. Listen carefully, young people. There is no safe sex outside of marriage. Just changing its name, or even worse, not even talking about it, doesn't make it go away. Major religion today has completely ignored the ancient landmarks of the Bible. One church sign that I read said, if you're looking for a church that preaches a loving, understanding, forgiving God, come inside. Come as you are. Yes, God is love. God is loving. God is forgiving. If you repent, change, turn around. If you don't, God's landmark says there's going to be consequences. Yes, <laughs> come as you are, but change before you leave. You see, a church service should make us change. The world needs some good old-fashioned fire and brimstone preaching. Our churches need someone to tell them like it is. I'm talking about pulpit pounding, hellfire preaching. Do you realize that Jesus spoke twice as much about hell as he did about heaven? Repent. Over in Matthew, when we're introduced to John the Baptist, what was his message? Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the message that's still pertinent today. Repent. Dear people, our sermons need to either make you get right or get mad. A good sermon shouldn't make you feel good. It should convict you to change. That's what the old time religion was. Billy Sunday was a preacher in the 1800s. 
By the way, he was a, an alcoholic before he was saved and surrendered to preach. And he was preaching at one of these big meetings and one of his associates came to him and said, Billy, you really need to tone it down. You're offending people. You're rubbing the cat's fur the wrong way. And he said, no, my sermon don't need to change. The cat needs to turn around. Our churches need some of that old time preaching. <laughs> Folks, I can remember that uh, the preacher would wear out two or three handkerchiefs just wiping sweat. And you know, it wasn't their loud voice. It wasn't their style. It was what they were saying. It wasn't the messenger. It was the message. We need some old-time religion messages like we heard this morning right here in this church. They didn't water it down. One of my dear friends who's a preacher, his favorite term is, he said, I hate a preacher that pussyfoots around the pulpit. Now, folks, that's not a bad word. Pussyfoot means walking softly like a cat. You don't want to walk softly when it comes to sin. You've got to confront it head on. Our old time preachers called a spade a spade. They called a sin a sin. And that we needed to repent. Oh, give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. We need that old time God-fearing preaching. I want you to hear me, dear friends. Every preacher wants to talk to you about a loving God. Every preacher wants to talk to you about God's grace, about his forgiveness. But you know this, before there can be forgiveness, there has to be repentance. You have to change. Yes, the gospel is good news. But I want you to understand this. If you don't accept the gospel, if you move those ancient landmarks, then there's some bad news. And the bad news is, if you continue in sin, there's going to be consequences. Let me tell you tonight like an old time preacher would tell you. Here's the old time religion. They would say, lost person, you need to accept Jesus today. You need to come to him. He wants to save you. You need to acknowledge Jesus as your savior. Seek his mercy, repent, turn from your lifestyle. If you reject him, you're going to bust hell wide open. Saved person, there's sin in your life. Repent, change. God stands ready to forgive you. We, we preachers, we want to make you feel good. It's the human part of us that wants to talk to you about positive things. About how great it is to come to church. But dear people, the real message is this. We have an obligation we have a godly obligation to warn you about the seriousness of sin. The greatest example is the inspired writing of Jude, which our preacher started on this morning. I want you to turn with me there to the book of Jude and look at verse 3 and 4 of Jude. It says, Beloved, 
But I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. What Jude was saying is, is I, I wanted to write to you folks about how great it is to be saved. And all the peace. I wanted to write to you about a loving God. But now notice he finished it. He says, but it was needful. I needed to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Don't change, don't move the ancient landmarks is what he was saying. And he goes on to say, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Father or our God into lasciviousness. Now that just simply means worldly or things outside of God or anything goes. It means they were moving the ancient landmarks. And Jude was saying, it's needful for me to tell you that that's not going to work. You know, when we preach about love and not about the penalties of sin, we're moving the landmarks. We're making the landmarks so wide, just everybody come on. God loves you. He loves you like you are. Dear people, the message is repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I do want to thank you for being here. It pleases me that you're here. It pleases God that you're here. But I've done you a great disservice if I fail to tell you that just being here is not being in God's will. It's hearing His Word and letting His Word change you. That's repentance. Let's not move the ancient landmarks. Yes, I'm glad you're here. God's glad you're here. Because God's word needs to pierce your heart. And we need to hear more sermons that point out the changes that we need to make. We all like feel-good sermons. God is love, God is forgiving, God blesses us greatly, and he does all this and more. But this is what Jude meant in these latter verses. Look down at verse 17. But beloved, remember, remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last times who walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. And ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying to the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I want you to really notice verse 22 and 23. And of some have compassion, making a difference. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. God is a God of compassion. God is a God of love. God is a forgiving God. But there's times when we need the fire and brimstone. We need the good old time religion to pull us out of our sin and cause us to repent. Hear me today, dear friends. Lost person, lost person, you're bound for hell. 
saved person, God wants you to grow in His grace. God wants you to repent of the sin in your life. There's rewards you're losing. Jesus is your Savior. It's time you made Him Lord of your life. Lost person, again, I want you to listen carefully to me. You may have sat through some watered-down sermons. In some other churches, you may have heard some feel-good messages. But let me tell you, hell is just as real and it's just as hot. Without Jesus... Hell is where you are bound today. Today is the day of salvation. Saved person, what do you need to change in your life? Today's the day you need to make that decision. Let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to that old time re religion. Repent, change. God's calling to you. Oh, it'd be great. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It was good enough for me. Yes, I think fondly of the good old days. It saddens me to see what many of our churches have lost today because we move the ancient landmarks. Well, Brother Butch, I just don't understand about these landmarks you keep talking about. It's just this simple, folks. There's boundaries that we have to stay within in our lives and boundaries we have to stay within in our teaching and our preaching. When we add anything to the message of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, we've moved the landmarks. We want to say, well, you've got to belong to this church. You can't be saved. You just move the landmarks. Well, you've got to be baptized or you're not saved. You just move the landmarks. You've also just moved it. You said, it don't matter how you live. God loves you. Just come on in. You've moved the landmark. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. And I hope it is for you. Let's all stand.